Hello everyone and welcome to this tip video for unitycookie.com. My name is Patrick Bullens and in this tutorial I want to go ahead and discuss getters and setter methods with you. And getter and setter methods are used to either read out data from an object or set it to a new value. And it's going to be in a transparent way except it's going to be sort of an extra layer of control. And for instance um, what I want to do is I want to give the my player here, a cube, a simple player script with in it um, a, a, a hit points variable. And I want to use the script manager with a dummy script to read out that value and set it to something new. Except I'm going to let the player script do all of the work. And so I'm going to show you that in two languages. First I'm going to do what I just said in uh, C sharp. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and set its mood and do some other control things using a JavaScript version. And I'll include a little timetable at the description below, stating where in the video which language starts where. So feel free to skip ahead or stick around and see how both languages handle things. First, I'm going to go ahead and create a new C Sharp file. And C Sharp is going to be my first because it's a bit um, easier to follow or a bit more straight to the point, I think. And so I'm going to call this player script underscore cs for C sharp. I'm just going to copy the last part because I know I'm going to be typing it a lot. And I'm opening this up in Mono Develop here. And let's first delete all of this stuff because I'm not going to be needing it. And so first let's take a look at what I want to do. Normally I could say something like public int hp. Then let's set it to a default of 42 maybe. And you could have another script like an enemy, have a sword attack, and attack him. And you could say player script cs.hp minus equals uh, damage of the sword or something. But you may not want to be able, or you may not want to do this um, part because of the data encapsulation where it's just general good, um, good rule of thumb to keep everything confined to the object it belongs to. But also because for instance, with HP, it should never be able to become less than zero. Or let's also say in this case that there's a maximum of 100. And so you can take care of all that stuff in this extra little control layer that we're going to be creating. So in order to do that, we're not going to make this public. It's going to be private instead, which it is by default. And I'm going to call it underscore HP. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to now make a public int and this one is going to be HP. And the reason I'm doing that is because even though internally you now have to access this one, this will make it very transparent to other objects calling it and setting its value or reading it out, where it feels like they're accessing the actual variable, but instead they're going to go through these functions and have their data manipulated if need be. So what to do next for the getter and setter methods is after this declaration, I'm going to open and close my curly brackets, which you normally only find for methods, um, but that's what we're going to be creating here anyway. And so for this property, I want to create a get, then the curly brackets, and a set. All right, and with, uh, when this function is called, the get HP function, we want to return the current HP. So I'm going to say return underscore HP, which in this case would return 42. Now to set it, let's first make it act like a normal public variable by saying underscore HP equals and then whatever it's being set to in the other script. Um, but since you may notice that we don't have any kind of parentheses here where we can say, oh, you're expecting um, damage taken or something. We don't have that. Instead, internally, we can call the, the value for that. And so this is going to be set to whatever it needs to be automatically under the hood. All right, so I'm going to save this here. I'm going back to Unity first to make sure there aren't any compiler errors. Oh, and don't mind this set here. Um, it's not some kind of subliminal message. It's just from my previous recording. Um, and don't worry. So I'm going to go ahead and create my let's create the JavaScript file, and this is going to be our dummy script. Right, and I'm going to attach this to my script manager. And let's also open this here. And all I want to do for now is make our player 
Well, actually, let's just say um, player script CS of type player script CS. And so I'm just going to drag that in through the inspector. And then I'm going to change this to be a start function. And in it, let's try calling the get method. So in order to do that, like I said, it's going to be very transparent. All we need to do is say player script CS. Or actually, maybe this might be a bit clearer if I would just call this um, PCS. Just to sort of indicate the difference between this one and that one. Well, can I select it? Yes, all right. PCS.hp. Let's see what that does. Let's try to compile. Oh, and we're getting an error. Um, where it says the name player script CS does not denote a valid type. And I've had this problem before, which is why I've created a standard assets folder. Um, what's happening is that the player script is being compiled after the dummy script. And so the dummy script can't possibly know of its existence yet. And the way to fix that is to just throw this one in the standard assets. Because this folder always gets compiled first. And as you can see, the error is now gone. So if we were to play now, um, what should happen is that it's going to... Oh, we should still assign that in the editor. Script manager. And this one is from the previous recording as well, so know that. Let's throw in the player. We can't, so let's see why not. Uh, this one also has to... I'm sorry about that. Standard assets. So now we drag this onto the player. Now we can drag the player here. And that automatically sets the component to be the player's player CS script. And so what's going to happen here is from the start function of the dummy script, it's going to simply access this HP property, which in turn will call automatically the getHP function. So to Unity and play, if all goes well, we should get 42 in our output window here, which we do. So that's cool. Next, let's try setting it. So let's say pcs.hp equals um, 33. And let's try to compile and hit play. And now we get 33. That's pretty cool. But let me go ahead and show you one more thing. And that's about the extra layer of control that you get here. Because um, I just mentioned that we could have a minimum of zero and a maximum of 100 hit points, for instance. And so instead of just setting it to be the new value, which could be anything, let's make sure to clamp it. So we can say mathf.clamp, and we want to clamp the incoming value, which is still called value, between a minimum of zero and a maximum of 100. And these are both inclusive. And so what's gonna happen now is we are going to be manipulating this data before actually assigning it. So to make sure this works, this is currently at 42. Let's say that it would be um, plus equals 75. And so also note that I can also use um, operations like plus equals, negative equals, or minus equals, etc. It's really a very transparent way of accessing and setting the data. So it's on compiling. And 42 plus 75 is more than 100, yet that's all we get. And so what, it, what this does is, um, it saves us the trouble of, in here, having to say, well, if pcs.hp is less than 100, then etc., etc. That's now all happening within the player script where it should be, um, because the dummy script shouldn't have to conserve itself, concern itself with anything that it doesn't directly relate to. All right, so that was pretty much that for the c -sharp version. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create the JavaScript version now, where we're going to be using the mood. Right, so let's call this player script JS. Also copy this name. And this is going to work a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to say var mood. Oh, oops. Excuse me private var underscore mood of type string. And then I'm going to remove the update function. And the way to do this is to 
instead of um, making a public string and then using the curly brackets, we're actually going to be making the functions as you would any normal one, with one exception. We are going to say function get, and then the function name, which is going to be mood, and we're going to be using function set, and also mood. Now, one thing to, or two things to do here. First, in the getter, it's going to return the current value of mood, which is going to be a string. And in the setter method, here we do have the parentheses, so we have to make sure to tell it to expect the value called value, and it's going to be of type string as well. And you have to make sure to call this value, or else it won't work. Now, another little caveat of using the JavaScript version is that you have to um, encapsulate this within a class. As it is now, it won't work, and it will give you an error saying expected end of file, but found a function. So the way to get around that is to place everything in a class, which normally happens in the background. Um, every JavaScript file that you compile will get compiled to a version of mono behavior. And so that's exactly what we're going to be extending from. So to do that, just type class and then um, the name of this file, which is playerscript.js, then extends mono behavior, and then curly bracket open and curly bracket close. All right. So in the get function here, we can say return underscore mood. And in the set function, we can say underscore mood equals value. So let's go back to our dummy script now. And first say var pjs for player JavaScript of the type player JavaScript or player script JS. I'm going to copy this line here, paste that there, and comment out these two, because I'm no longer concerned with the c -sharp portion. And let's call jcs.mood. Okay, so if all goes well, oh, we should probably set it to be a default here. So let's set that to neutral. Let's read to compile, play, and we're getting errors. Unknown identifier JCS. Okay. Oh, I called it PJS. Oops. PJS. Excuse me. All right. And it's gone. Object reference not set to an instance of object. Did I forget something? Oh, yes, I did. I forgot to assign the uh, script to the player, which is the fourth time I've made that mistake in recording today. Oops. Okay, so let's play the game. And are we playing yet? Yes, we are. Then something went wrong because I'm still getting object reference not set on line 8. So let's check that out. PGS. Oh, right. Um, in the script manager, I still have to drag the player out of there. All right, sorry about that. Let's start playing again. And now we're getting back neutral in the debug log here. Perfect. So now for the setter, let's try something um, that really utilizes this um, extra control layer here. So let's say bjs.mood equals happy. Yes, happy is good. Then in here, um, in the set function here, instead of just setting its new value, I'm not going to do any checks, but um, let's say that there are some things dependent on this, like for instance the color of the player and this GUI text here, which is going to always display its mood. Now we could in the level or in the dummy script say, um, pjs.mood is happy, and its color is going to be green, and the text is going to display its current mood, and something else is going to happen, And but you don't want that. Um, preferably, we could even delete this entire GUI text here, and not have to change a thing about this line, because this is really just the only part that... This just controls the mood, and that's it. So as that's happening, in here we can say renderer dot material dot and here's also something fun to show you um, 
you can see here that as I'm typing this, we have color, which is the property we can um, access. But in reality, what's happening is it's going to call either the get color or set color function. And so these are both um, exposed here, which for some reason it doesn't do for my um, for my accessor methods. But this is really exactly what's happening with our code as well, and with a lot of Unity internal things. Anyway, I'm just going to set this to be, well, actually this should probably be dependent on the value. So let's say switch value. And if you don't know, switch is just a long if else thing. So we can say case happy. Then let's set it its color to be color.green and break out of the loop. Let's copy that. Or if it's sad, I can set it to red. Okay. And I also want to change the text. So all I would need to change now is in the player script, where I would have to say for mood text, GUI text, which I'm going to assign in the inspector, assuming I don't forget. And I can then say mood text dot text equals value. Right, so now going with Unity. I hope I don't have any errors. Now I'm a player. I will assign the GUI text. And if I now hit play, you can see the mood text is now changed to happy. My cube is now green. And I indeed get happy back when asking for it. So that's pretty much it on the getters and setters. Um, it just happened to, um, as in researching this a little bit beforehand, I found a couple of debates on programmers who were really liking them or either really hating them. And there's still a bit of debate going on on that. But in my opinion, um, don't get too focused down on stuff like this. But it is a good practice to get into. And especially if you've got things going on like this, where um, things are going to be dependent on each other, then you want to keep things as close to um, as to what they're representing as possible and keep everything as internal as possible. So don't have other scripts deciding for the player script what happens with what data. Um, Again, that's just a general rule of thumb. There will always be exceptions and just do whatever seems best in that situation and I'm sure you'll do fine. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you all very much for watching and see you some other time.